Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Snake Doc here, and today I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and uh, I'm going to do a cleaning video. And what I mean when I say I don't normally do, I don't tend to clean my guns at this short of an interval. Um, I just put like 100 rounds through this the other day, if you guys watch my video on this, this is the Walther CCP, there you can see, CCP. I'm going to go ahead and show clear here, we're going to dump the mag out. And then I will show you disassembly first, and then uh, I'll show you what I use to clean. Um, so, this is the Walther tool that it comes with. Let's see, I might have to put my hand on that. There you can see the Walther flag on there. Um, so this is the, like I said in the other video, this is the revised version. All you basically do is use the little nipple right here that's on there, and push that bar in. And then um, you displace that bar like this, and then you push the uh, block in far enough that when, uh, whoops, I have to drop the striker, that's why. I've never had this much problem with it, but of course things always change when you get on camera. Hmm. Try it again. I've never had a problem with this. Normally I just push this tool and the slide just pops up. Just like that. So there you go. So here you can see the piston and you can see how nasty it got. It was pretty shiny before I shot because I had just did like a an inspection cleaning on this. And here's the striker channel. You can see how dirty that is. So um, as I was saying in the other video, blowback design, fixed barrel. So the barrel is there. Recoil spring just slides over the barrel and slides off. Both ends are ground flat. Um, I'm just going to set it aside. I guess it doesn't really matter which way it goes. Um, the way the trigger mechanism works on this is when the trigger bar pulls forward, it uh, hooks on this cam right here, which is a cylinder that goes all the way across. And then it actuates the sear and then the striker block plunger. So this right here would push on your striker block plunger and this is your sear surface now being that this is post recall um i believe they changed the sear so the sear is taller and it has a little bit more interface with the striker itself don't quote me on that but excuse me from uh videos that i've seen it seems like there's a difference afterwards um so how am i going to go about cleaning well I don't do anything too extravagant, so I just use an old brush like this. Um, it helps if you have like a polymer pick tool like this. If not, bamboo skewers work really good, and then you know a nice sharp point on those. Um, a couple different rods, just a polymer rod right here. Oh, this is the Glock one, I think. Yep, and then the bore brush, so nine millimeter, and then I also have one um, that's just a regular. Um, style cleaning rod with the brush on it that's been wrapped in um, copper wool so chore boy chore boy is the only one that's like um, it's not plated copper it's pure copper so I wrap that in there and that gets the bore extra shiny um, some chemicals that you're gonna want on hand uh, white lithium grease I use that in um, slide rails stuff like that however this gun um, does not have slide rails um, what it does is just the barrel the opening on the slide um, rides across the barrel so there's no front and rear front or rear rails on this um, the rear is that um, plunger thing is is captured right here on this hook and uh, that's what keeps the slide from being able to lift and do this kind of stuff 
So there are it's pretty unique in the fact even when you have like Makarovs and uh, other blowbacks, there's usually some short rails back here. And that's kind of how they get hung up when you go to um, install your slide again. But yeah, there's no slide rails on this, so kind of unique. Um, we can see some carbon buildup on the feed ramp. This gun is just going to shoot dirtier just because of the, the style that it is. So you want some t-shirt patches or any kind of uh, cotton patches. And then I just have a very, very used cotton t-shirt um, rag for wiping off excess stuff. So, um, my solvents that I'm going to be using, I have some Hoppies number 9 or Hops, and then I also have some break-free CLP here, so um, just use whatever you have. The other things that I always have on my bench is, uh, this is um, a concoction of um, power steering fluid, not power steering fluid, transmission fluid and um, Marvel Mystery Oil and I think a dash of acetone. I can't remember, but it's like the Ed's, Ed's Red formula. Um, I use this a lot as a lubricant. And then I also have, uh, this is uh, 0W20 uh, Mobile One. So full synthetic, lots of PAEA. Um, some of the good additives in it that make it a, a very uh, highly effective synthetic oil. Some other things to grab while you're out is just grab, like you can get these at like dollar stores or craft stores, it's a buck. Um, cotton tip, a hundred pack of these. Um, I like them with the stick because you can reach down in places. Um, you can get a little bit farther forward, you know, you could even use this as swabbing your barrel. Might be a good idea for running your first um, time through there. Um, you can reach down in mag wells with it. You can reach up from the bottom. It all depends on what your gun is going to be like. Um, a lot of it you can just hit with a brush, but any place that a brush can't get, you might be able to get to with something like this. So enough rambling. I guess I'm going to open up um, my hops, which I'm running low on, but I'll show you. So it's kind of like a brownish, brownish color. Um, it's almost like a whiskey color, if you will. And then all I'm going to do with that is just start putting it on um, some of the spots that are really carboned up. There you can see it's already like picking stuff off. Um, that's not my intention right now. My intention is just to kind of spread it on there and have it start doing its thing. Nice thing about the cotton too is that since it picks up some, if you press it against, you can get it to release some of... Uh, what you have on there and it will uh, leach its way into certain spots. So now I'm just going to start doing that here. Um, there's a lot of recesses and things on the bottom of this. So I'm just gonna, oh wow, that's really filthy. Um, I'm just going to start dabbing in here wherever I can. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy filthy. Give it a twist in some spots. Get behind that extractor hook. Get that breech face. Um, and then I'm going to actually take a patch. Put some break free on the patch because it's got that needle tip. And then what I'm going to do on that with this soaked patch right here is I'm just going to wrap it around this piston and just give it a uh, quick rub down and let that start working before I go into the brushing action. So um, what I'm going to do now is just take that solvent covered patch and I'm just going to go on the outside of this barrel here. Kind of doing like a 360 wrap on it. Uh, make sure you get that muzzle end. And then before this one is completely used up, get that dust off there. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to put it over the breech. And then I guess um, we'll try. Yep, so it can go through. So I'm just going to push that patch through. Pop it out the other end. Unhook it. And then this one I'm going to have to pull back out. 
So that'll get you started for your bore cleaning. We can see. So we'll let that be. Um, now what I'm going to do is just come back with the brush and just start hitting just certain spots here that I know the uh, hoppies is starting to work. There's a notch cut right here um, on the side of the barrel. Make sure you get that cleaned out. There's a, a lot of grit and nastiness in there. Feed ramp, of course, is very important, as is the chamber mouth. And then you can go to either a solvent covered, um, you know, let's just do it just for the sake of it. Let's put a little bit of solvent on um, a second patch here. And then wipe and you can see how much bright and shinier that metal has gotten, right? So the brushing action loosens up the uh, carbon and then it just takes a single wipe and then you can get the rest of it to disappear. So we did the exterior of the barrel. We did all of our um, firing mechanism back here. Like I said, there's no rails or anything to wipe down on this one. So you're just going to want to do that. Um, I am going to just take this regular brush here. I'm just going to put a little bit of solvent on the uh, first couple bristles here. So you can see the difference here, how the ends it is uh, brown and then the rest of it is still the white colored nylon. Um, so you don't make a mess all over your bench. It's better if you can kind of angle your gun down so that way when you get that shoved through there, it doesn't splash out and spray a bunch of stuff all over. Then you can just kind of work it back and forth a couple times. Um, just do it down on the bench like this and then withdraw it back out. And then you're going to, um, we can, you can unscrew this and you can go to, you can either thread a patch through your uh, slot right here or just ball it up at the breech. Um, we can do it, we'll do it both ways actually. I'll just, I'll do it um, by threading it through here first. So once it comes through there, you just kind of pull it halfway. And it'll look kind of like this. And then this should have no problems going through. So you're just gonna go through, down and through a couple times. Um, to me, that doesn't seem like it's really the most effective way. Um, so I am just going to double it up and put it over there. And then we'll just use this as like a, a rod. And I'm just going to push it through. Much more resistance. So I know I'm hitting every wall on the barrel. And then I'm just going to take it out the end here and just wipe the end of the barrel off. So I am content with that. I have a, I had a bore light. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to get that on camera. So there you can see our bore is nice and shiny and bright. Uh, I'm inspecting it with my eye, which is easier than the camera. It looks very, very nice. Um, I'm content with the lower. Um, the one thing that I am going to do that some people have said smooth their trigger up is... Also, look at your articulation points. So right here, I see a uh, point where the trigger bar hooks onto um, a nub on the trigger mechanism. So right here is an articulating point where it's going to do some rotation. So I'm just going to take a little bit of oil with a needle point here, a needle tip, and I'm just going to do one drop right there. And then I'm just going to work it a few times till it drops in. Um, there's also a plunger right here that spring loads the trigger bar. So I'm going to put one drop. Actually, I'm going to brush that off first. So I'm just going to give it a light brush and then I'm going to put one drip of oil right there. Again, working the trigger bar so that it can work its way down and into that plunger. And then... Um, since the rotation is not really accessible from the top where these are because it's a solid pin going through a solid block, um, you can see, if you look very closely, you can see the, how that barrel turns. So I'm going to put one drip on either side of this barrel.
that's that one drip on either side of that barrel and then I'm just gonna work the trigger really super fast holding it horizontal like this so it'll drip down in there and the trigger smooths up nice then I just take some residue that I have on my finger and make sure everything is good right here make sure that feed ramp feels nice and smooth um, and then you can take your dry patch that you used and just give it a final wipe. So I am content with the lower, so I'm going to set that aside. Actually, I'm going to put my recoil spring back on. But because of the articulation of the slide on top of that barrel, you are going to want to very lightly lubricate your exterior of your barrel. So I just do a string of uh, liquid like that on there, and then I just smear it all the way around. And you want to make sure that you get down under here. So reach in through that way as far as you can. And if you need to, you can um, put oil on a patch and do it that way. I just like using my finger. Um, that's what she said. Um, so we'll put that on like that. And now we're just going to go back to this. So we're not going to remove the piston because there's no need to. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this... Uh, this Glock brush that has a little bit of solvent on the end of it, remember? And I'm just going to brush it this way, flip it down, I'm going to brush the top side and then just slowly work my way around on that. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is a piston and it's going to uh, end up like this after every time you shoot anyways. Um, so now I can move this stuff off my rag, Flip that back down, grab it with the rag. This doesn't have to be lubricated, by the way. It can be dry. So don't worry about that. But you can see how much brighter it is just from that little bit of brushing that we did on there. Uh, make sure you clean the, the dome end of it, if you will. Um, just kind of make sure it's not completely caked with carbon. Um, I know that the, like uh, they make like scrapers. So you could take um, like this one I made. This is a piece of uh, carb, um, copper that was pounded flat and uh, kind of like spooned out the end on the thing. And I could scrape any of that carbon off if I wanted to. And there you can kind of tell. See how it just scrapes it. If you wanted to. It's no big deal. You don't have to do this. It's not even in the manual or anything. But since I have a tool right here, I'll just show you. And there I can get knock some of that excess carbon off. I'll show you that here on my fingertip. So here, here's some of the carbon that I was able to get off that. And now <clears throat> take one of your solvent covered uh, patches. Just give that a wipe off. Okay, now there is some uh, um, carbon and stuff on the inside here. So you can either just take like your brush and just brush down the top side. And then just take your patch. Um, this is where like hooks come in handy because I can just hook that t-shirt and just press it around in different spots. So that's all wiped down. And there's a drastic difference there. Now you can actually see, I'm gonna try getting that for you up here on camera. Um, Find an angle for you. There you go. So you can see how there's some of that metal. You can see that metal before that was all covered with like a carbon powder. Um, all right, so now since I've kind of done, uh, I remember I was running the, the Q-tip down in here. I'm just gonna grab a second Q-tip now that that's been soaking for a while. And I'm gonna start working as best as I can to clear most of this trash out. Look at that, first wipe. So again, um, on your normal, oh, I just snapped the stick, on the normal um, striker fire pistol operations, it's not going to be this dirty. But um, because of the style that this gun is being a blowback with the gas system on it, um, that's kind of one of the reasons. So again, you can take um, a patch and take your hook or pick tool. This, again, this one is polymer, so it's not going to hurt anything, but it's like a dental pick. You could use uh, wooden toothpicks um, or the bamboo bamboo skewer. You can take the skewer and just hook it under, hook it in some of this um, 
cotton material and then just start working it down in some of the slots. Doesn't have to be um, back to uh, unfired condition because it never will be again. Uh, you just want to make sure that you don't have excess loads of junk in there that can cause things to bind or malfunction. And what I like to do now is make sure that the uh, striker block plunger is moving freely. So just use the opposite, the blunt end of your uh, instrument. Just push it up and down. You can, you're not going to hurt anything by putting a drop of lube on that. Um, some manuals recommend it. Some, uh, it depends on how much interaction that striker block has with the striker channel, because you do want your striker channel on most striker fired guns to be uh, unlubricated and non goopy. So I just put that one drip on there and I'm just working it in. I'm going to take a patch here and just give that a wipe off of the excess. And we are ready to reassemble. I am very content with that. So, reassembly, you put your spring in where your barrel goes through. And when you start pulling back here, um, you have to make sure that your um, that piston is going to go into the gas port. Also, while making sure that your uh, barrel is going to come out the end of the slide. So it's kind of a juggling effect for a minute here until you get everything lined up. And of course, it's harder on camera than it is when it's off camera. So let me redo it here. There we go. Okay, so now you'll get it to like right here and then just hold the gun together. Take your tool again and push in on the striker, um, the striker retainer plate here at the end. Again, I'm making this look so much harder. So basically you push it in like that and then just retract just a little bit and then it drops down into place. So as soon as it drops down into place, you can, you can pull your tool out and then make sure everything is back together. Sorry about how wonky that looks. It's really not that hard. I, I mean, I can do it in split seconds, but, um, so run your uh, slide a few times. If some of that oil that you put on the excess on the outside of your barrel um, is excessive and it goes around the face of the uh, slide, just give it a wipe down. But you do want to be able to retract it and see some sheen on that barrel because again, your barrel is working as your slide rails as well. So you can go ahead and put your magazine back in and check function. You're gonna draw it back. Slide stays open. Send the slide home. Put the safety on. Dead trigger. Shut the safety off, should fire. Hold the trigger back. These have a long stroke, you gotta reset it all the way with the slide action. Let that out and it fires again. So go ahead and store it with your safety on. It doesn't much matter because you can work the slide either way. And then just take your um, semi-clean cloth here and just give it an exterior wipe down. And you are done. So we are clean and ready for next use. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry, sorry that this video went so long. Um, they're not going to let me monetize it or anything so because I took the gun apart. But uh, no big thing. Um, stay tuned. I have some uh, other review videos coming soon, some holster reviews. And I'm almost ready to give away that shield video or shield holster. So stay tuned for a video for that and watch the live drawing. Thank you guys for watching. Always shoot safe.